there's one team sitting in there that's just bobbing above the surface <laughs> of uh, of the relegation zone, which is Plymouth, who mm. have been a little bit of a lead balloon for the league, really, haven't they? It wasn't long ago that we saw that that Plymouth's home fixtures to come were quite hard, but their home form was very good. And they had relatively easy away fixtures, yeah. in theory. <laughs> yeah. That uh, we were thinking, well, could they could they be an outside bet for the playoffs? Uh, yeah. Little did we know that they were going to drop like a stone, not score at home for, I think, five matches. And, um, yeah. and they were going to lose their manager. <laughs> well, exactly. And they were going to lose two really influential players at the same time, weren't they? That's right. Yeah, so, absolutely. So it's it's all it's all happened really. You know, they've they've lost a manager in in Schumacher. They've lost another manager in in Foster. One one manager's gone because he did so well. One's gone because he didn't really do so well. To be honest with you. Yeah. So exactly. We got quite interested in that, didn't we? And yeah. I mean, even before Mister Foster unfortunately lost his job, and we we got a a, a Plymouth fan or a Plymouth vlogger, really, a guy called uh, Harvey England, who volunteered to actually give us his opinion on, on what he sees week in, week out. Um, so I just want to uh, play that clip for you now for you to listen to. And then we'll uh, we'll maybe talk about it in a bit more detail afterwards. So my current views on obviously the Foster situation, he has departed the club and many fans, if not all fans, are delighted with, with this departure. Um, I feel like he got everything wrong. I feel like he ruined our attack and philosophy with, with Schumacher and even Ryan Lowe implemented while they was in charge of the football club. He was always in an uphill battle with, with the with the departure of Azaz and Kaisler Hayden so the first week he was joining. I feel like he, he ruined players as such. I feel like Whitaker, he went from a goal scoring machine possibly up there with, with the, the top players in the championships and now being, I'd even go as far to say as average. Ryan Hardy, I feel like it's come apparent he's been a ghost last few weeks and the chances he's had, he hasn't he hasn't put them away where he could have. Dan Scar and, and Callum Roy obviously becoming ghost players at a club, being, obviously with all the rumours of them being told to train by themselves and whatnot. So I do feel like the departure is going to be a success. Six cup finals to go. But I feel like now the relegation battle is a little bit more exciting. I feel like the fans can truly get behind the team a bit more. Wotherham on Friday. I feel like these next two games at least are must wins. And, and to the others, they, they've got to be counted as cup finals. And we've got to leave everything out on the pitch. But thank you for having me on. So I found that quite interesting, David, because quite a lot of what Harvey said, I mean, I've I've seen a few... Plymouth games and watched a few highlights and a few different things. And there's definitely been a difference since uh, Mr. Schumacher left and, and Mr. Foster came in. Yeah. And and Harvey, well, let's let's pick it apart as as we go. So he made the the point there that he felt that Foster coming in, he'd ruined or, or changed the attacking or the playing style of uh, of, of Plymouth. So um I know you've got a little bit more information on that. So what, what are your thoughts on, on that point, first of all? Yeah, I think his record, I mean, it's, it's you know, it doesn't bear scrutiny really, does it, in the end? Mm. He's, I, I've got him down as 15 games, I think, because I think there was a there was a sort of turnover period from Schumacher to Foster right. where the, the sporting director came in and I think he's come back in again. Um you could argue about whether it's whether it's fifteen or sixteen games, but I think of the fifteen, I think they lost eight, drew four, won three. But it's the last ten or twelve mm. games where they've really not, you know, they haven't won. They've won one in the last twelve or something. Yeah, um, and they've gone down from again. It depends where you draw the line, but they've gone down from maybe eighteenth to twenty first, or maybe even sixteenth to twenty first depending on where you draw the line. But it's not looking good, is it? No. But what he seems to have done, I mean, it's, we'll, to first of all, just look at the sort of data side of it. They were always a bit of a direct side. You know, they always like to sort of get the ball forward and, and attack. And they've been an attacking team under Schumacher for sure. But one of the bigger differences was that they were one of the least pressing, high pressing teams in the division. Hmm. But they've turned that round to be, you know, much more of a high pressing team. He's come in and changed it from a four three three to a three or five at the back. And he's 
switched on the press, really. So he's obviously basically changed things around immediately. He's 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 ch- sometimes you get a new head coach or manager and they want to take a bit of time to sort of see how things are and who can do what, what the best and strongest configuration is. It it seems as though, looking at the data, he didn't do that. He just went straight in and and said, right, this is how we're going to do it, changed it. Now, I guess if you do that and it works for you, then you're the hero, aren't you? Yeah. But it does leave you vulnerable if you make changes straight away where somebody can look at, they can look at, they can draw a line after a certain match day and go, right, he took over here and they can pick apart very easily what changed. And then, of course, you get, and this isn't always fair because there's always a lot more going on than you can all, than you can see at first glance. Um, and if you're a, an avid fan and you watch all the games and you think, you know, you know what's, you, you know what the trends are and everything, then you'll be probably better genned up. But you can definitely look and see that there was a change. And unfortunately, yeah. in the end, it was one where the results went against him and it's an easy stick to beat him with, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, the the, the biggest change, like you said, is is the is the pressing and it's it's pretty marked, isn't it? I mean, they were, after 22 games, they were the least pressing team, as, as you yes. said. And by the time uh, Mr. Foster was relieved of his duties, they'd actually moved up into the top half as far as pressing, didn't they? So yeah. for it to have that amount of swing you'd say that they're probably in the top three or four as far as pressing, wouldn't you? Because well, you, in order exactly. to gain that sort of momentum, yeah. they'd, they'd have to be there. So it's such a such a dramatic change Yeah. Uh, because you would imagine with a direct counter-attacking team like Plymouth, if you're not pressing, then you're, you're falling back into ranks, aren't you? You're going back into your shape as we've, we've talked about on previous yeah. episodes. And you're saying to the other team, right, okay, come on, you're going to have to really throw things at us in order to break us down because we know exactly where we're going to be. And then, yeah. of course, if a team does overcommit or does you know, misplace a pass somewhere, they're ready to spring and come in forward with players like Whitaker, who, um, who were you know, really, really effective uh, under Schumacher. That does seem to be a big change, doesn't it? Because if you're pressing, all of a sudden you're not, as solid in your shape as you were. The players aren't used to uh, being left a little bit more vulnerable, maybe at, at the back. Yeah. And um, and that seems to have certainly, well, not certainly, but could potentially be one of the reasons why the form has has dropped off. Well, you know, if if some of this some of this is related to things that are not easy to establish, like mm. the strength of the opposition, because when you've been in the the job for you know fifteen games or something, mm-hmm. it's a third of the year. There's a chance that that third happened to be against a certain style of play, mostly. Or we've seen this before. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes of course you can go in and and you've played all the hardest teams and you 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 go on a great run and everybody says, oh, it's brilliant. You change it to this and it's fantastic, mm-hmm. but they don't look under the surface and they don't recognise that some of the teams that you played were some of the easier teams and it could be, and I haven't done that sort of analysis on it. So I don't know to what degree some of that might have fed into it, mm-hmm. but um, that, yeah, you, it's definitely when you change things and and we've seen, it's pretty dramatic. You know, he, he just changed the formation. Yeah. They were always a team. We were talking about this because they've been one of your kind of pet, you know, they have been, yeah, been my second one of my favorite or your projects. first favorite team yeah. in the division. And I've enjoyed watching them. And they were always trying to get on the front foot. They were always dangerous going forward. Um, mm-hmm. and so I think that's sort of fallen away a bit. Now, how much of that is due to Azaz moving back in yeah. January and then moving on again, Kundle moving back? Undoubtedly, that's going to have had a diff- made a yeah. difference. Because they um, they went from I mean we've we've got the numbers here with the game changer scores uh, the, yeah. the game changer score is is the amount of sort of attacking output isn't it that the yeah. that the players have and and a hundred percent is the league average or what you'd expect them to to kick out yeah and and Azaz and Kundal were certainly not average were they they were way way above weren't they they were really at the heart and this is the problem that you have 
when you take loan players, isn't it? You mm-hmm. you can be you you can be really pleased with yourself because you can bring in some quality players from from above, you know, from uh, Villa and Wolves in this case, mm-hmm. who are young, look like they're going to play at a higher level. You get a really good sort of solid performance out of them. You couldn't perhaps have afforded to have brought them in as your players. So you're riding on the back of that a bit, but obviously one of two things happens then. Either they're playing so well that the club want them back, which is what happened in these cases, or mm-hmm. you're just a shop window for someone else yeah. who comes on and, and and takes them off you. So in this case, it did look like that happened, didn't yeah. it? So I mean, um, at, at that point, wasn't it? When Schumacher left, you had Finazaz was at 230% <laughs> game changer yeah, score and go. Luke Cundall at 167%. So yeah. really they're, you know, they're almost three, three or four yeah. players there, aren't they? Yeah. They're, um, they're really important to you, aren't they? And then the replacements or the, the direct replacements seem to have been uh, Alfie Devine and, and Giabi, don't they? Who've come in yeah. from Tottenham, you know, Divine is a very well thought of player yeah. um, at, at Tottenham and Giabi at Leeds is, is also, you know, thought to be, uh, have good things ahead of them. Mm. Uh, so we're certainly not saying they're not good players. Yeah. But as far as from a, um, a, a game changer score of actually an, an output attacking wise, they've, mm. they've not even really, well, they've not even lived up to the average, have they? Divine was sent off, wasn't he, in the last... Was it the last game? I think, I think. he was, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think he was. So he's not I mean, that available. can happen, but... Yeah, no, I mean, it's... It was unlikely they were going to replace them yeah. and not not notice the difference, wasn't it? Sure. So I'm sure that Ian Foster's kind of, you know, looking at that and thinking that that was just kind of... Yeah, that was hard luck on me, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because it coincided, but... That's, I mean, and I think he, I think he chose, I think he had the choice of who he bought in. So I know he'd, he'd worked with Divine, uh, Alfie yeah. Divine in, in the England youth setups. And I think yeah. he worked with Giabi before yeah. as well. So, I mean, Giabi, uh, after the, the 40 games now, I believe, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, David, Giabi's got a game changer score of 53%. Um, and well, Alfie Divine's is 86%. Is that right? That's probably right if you're looking at it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, but yeah, 53, divine 86. Yeah, you're right. Mm, so, you know, and um, you look at the difference there attacking wise. I mean, that must, well, not must, but you would imagine that that's going to then feed on to the players further up because I think we classify yeah. divine and Giabi as, as attacking support, and then we've yeah. got our, our um, chance creators and strikers. And and the main one really for for Plymouth was um, was Morgan Whitaker, wasn't it? Yeah, and he's an interesting one. Yeah. Um, and again, I, I'm not going to pretend that you know I've watched all the games and I know that know everything inside out about the player. But when you look at the data, you see that actually from about the time when um, Schumacher was about well was leaving, he had that purple patch Whitaker where. I think in nine in ten games he scored nine goals and got four assists. Um, so you know he was, he was really on fire. Yeah, he was flying, wasn't he? But they started him on the wing, you know, as part of a four-three-three. Looks like Foster's brought him into his change of shape, just as a more of an attacking midfield player. Gave him the captain's armband by the look of it, and he was doing well for the for the first sort of three or four games, and then. What's he got two in nine since? Mm. So it's you know, he's definitely seems to have his his output's been blunted, hasn't it? Yeah. And you'd have to say it's gonna be all tied up with performance of the team. What comes first? You know, does a player go off form so the team don't 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 achieve, or mm. is it the change of, of approach in the team pattern and, and style of play that isn't suitable for the player so he doesn't perform and there's, there's probably a bit of both going on. Yeah, it's, it's difficult, isn't it? Because you've got, as as you quite rightly said, you pointed to the change in formation to going from a four three three to a to a, a five at the back. His his role has maybe changed in there a little bit. He's gone from uh, from being a wide attacking player maybe to a bit more of a midfield player. So maybe yeah. he's not getting the chances as much. And maybe it was always going to happen. 
you know maybe this yeah. was going to be a revert to the to the mean sort of thing who, who yeah. knows but but certainly we we talk about don't we the attacking support players feeding the chance creators who then create the chance for the strikers to score the goals yeah and if you've got Kundal and Azaz who were so productive in that yeah. attacking support mm. then you think of it as well they're they're obviously generating quite a a large amount of fodder for the funnel to go into the chance creators to go into the strikers so yeah if the fodder now or, or the the output from those attacking support players is only 86% and mm. 53% way below the average yeah then you haven't got a lot to play with have you so no Whitaker might be that he's still as clinical as he has been mm. but he's got to do he hasn't got as many opportunities to to score those goals he? and have those opportunities. I'm sure that that's part of it. You know, it may be also that, you know, we, we talk about expected goals and you get hot streaks, don't you, where, you know, you're going to get a reversion to the mean. So mm. it may be, I mean, he wasn't going to keep up nine goals in 10 games for very long, was he? No. Unless he's no. Sammy Smoddy. That'd be some, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just, just, I'll put that caveat in Number there. Number two at the weekend, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's mad. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't going to carry on at that rate, but even so, um, I don't know. I'll tell you what I did notice. This might mm -hmm. be just being a little bit provocative. So it may be, maybe it doesn't mean anything or it maybe it does. But... People, I think, have been talking about, you know, well, you know, Foster changed it. We were a really attacking team and, and he's sort of turned it into a, you know, a less attacking team. When he was at the England youth set up with Cooper and they won the World Cup, the under-17s, mm -hmm. he had the role of national specialist out of possession coach. Just thought I'd throw that in there. <laughs> That's an interesting role. That's not one I've but, heard before. You know, I'm not saying it's like you can just draw a line from one thing to another, but mm. I just thought it's sort of interesting, perhaps. But, you know, yeah. people have got different ways of, of viewing how to win games, haven't they? And we, we've we very firmly nailed our colours to the attacking mask yeah. in, on this pod, which uh, we'll, we'll probably come on to again later on. Absolutely. So that's that's really interesting. So... He was, I'm going to try and remember what he said, national specialist out of possession coach. Yeah. So that would certainly, you know, having a look at their playing style change, counter-attacking looks the same, possession looks the same, directness looks the same. The only thing that really has changed massively is pressing, isn't yeah. it? So yeah. that, that's really interesting to, to see that because if yeah. that's – if that's his thing, yeah, it's like, well, I'm I'm known as being this out of possession guy. I'm pressing is is where I think it's at. Yeah, and yeah, that's that's the the big change. So that's, that's and the other thing yeah, I'll throw in there while I'm while I'm just throwing while I'm throwing <laughs> these hand grenades in there is you know yeah. So here goes the pin, um, but Schumacher goes to Stoke, and he plays his four three three at Stoke, and you know he's not pulling up mm. any trees there, is he? I well, think they've the last couple of few games they've got a few wins under their they belts. They seem to but... seem to be getting it together, but as we yeah. know, that can change. It's interesting because the the question that that's been sort of festering in the back of my mind: Did Schumacher know that Azaz and Kundal were going back to their clubs? Well, Kundal thought, ended up at Stoke, of course. Yeah, that's that's right. And so, and so yeah, that did, could be. Did he know he was available? Or mm. transfer and wanted to take him there. And did he know Azaz was was going back because he was doing so well and thought, well, this is a great opportunity for me because Maybe. when these guys are gone, I think my my stock is going to go down mm. because the team's going to going to suffer. Well, who, I bet you. Well, we don't know, but you might if you spoke to Ian Foster, you might get a perspective on that. Yeah, yeah. Might you? I don't know. Don't know the did, answer, but did he? Did he know had the players gone by the time he got in there? I assume they, they would I'm have done, wouldn't they? Well, he, yeah, because well, he went he went just before Christmas, mm. so and they obviously didn't move until the January. That's right, yeah. So, but I mean, the fact that he ends up at Stoke, I don't think that's a coincidence, is it? <laughs> no, you know, no. Cundle. So, 
but did he know about Zaz on his way? Did he? He may well have factored into the decision. I mean, mm -hmm. one one of the things you would say about about coaches and and managers and their moves and their career progression is a lot of the time it is about timing. Mm 